right, so I want to talk to you about underglaze today. These are underglazes, and I may have mentioned them at various points before. Um, but to get you in the right frame of mind for underglazes, I want to remind you of what these back here are called. What are they called? These are glazes, and these particular ones are cone 10 glazes. But glazes can be fired to different temperatures. One of the things, or, or what, what's in a glaze is there's clay, that, that keeps it from being just glass. In fact, I have a piece of glass right here. This is a couple of glass bottles that were melted down. And one of the things you see is they were melted down in a plate, but they've pulled away from the plate. Glass doesn't have clay in it, and so it doesn't stick. Glaze has clay that helps it stick to the pot when you're glazing it, to the, the, the bisque ware. Uh, it also has color usually, not always. And then it has silica and flux. Silica causes the glaze to melt, or, or I mean, it, it is the stuff that, that melts. And flux causes it to melt a little bit. So basically, silica is what is in glass. We also find it in glaze. Flux can be added to make it melt. And then water, and that's basically it. That's, those are the main ingredients that we find in a glaze. Now this, you should also remember what the ingredients are in slip or slurry, right? When I look at this, I sh you should know what this is. This is clay and water, and that's it. We might add a color, potentially, but this is clay and water. So it's going to stick to the surface of either uh, greenware, uh, leather hard or bone dry, or to the surface of bisqueware if I paint it on. This is not going to melt. It doesn't have any flux, it doesn't have any added silica. It does have some silica in it, naturally, because clay has silica. These are similar. These are our mass-produced underglazes, which are basically clay water and a color. And when you open these up, you can see already on the top of this bottle here, but when you open these up, these are brightly colored or dully colored, but the color inside the container is basically what you expect to see. These can be applied just like um, slips are, or just like slips are applied. They can be added on, you know, with a paintbrush. They can also be slip trailed. I didn't check for clogs on this one. We'll see how we're doing. So they can be added with some thickness. All right, I need a pin to get this one started. There we go. So they can be added with a bit of thickness and I can have them build up um, some thickness or be fairly thin. I can also mix them, all of those sorts of things. Importantly, these are not going to melt, or at least they are not designed to melt. They don't have added silica, um, they don't have added flux, and so they're not going to melt. Some of the colorants, though, do act as a bit of a flux, and they, so they can start to melt a little bit at high temperatures. Now, if you read the directions on the, on the underglazed container, you're going to see it says, shake and stir well. For solid coverage, apply three full coats. You can see with the one coat I've applied here that it's a little bit transparent. But one of the tricky things about these glazes is eat, or these under glazes, I should say, um, because they are not glazes, is that when you apply a nice even coat, you let that dry, it's going to look like it's done correctly. It's going to look like you have enough glaze there. This is going to dry fairly quickly, and so if I apply another coat over the top, it looks like full coverage. I promise you, you're going to be upset if you don't read these directions and actually apply three coats. Let them dry all the way in between, not like what I did, um, but let the, those coats dry all the way in between application, and then when you put a glaze over the top to make it shiny, it'll look correct. Oftentimes it'll look, uh, when it's dry, it'll look like one or two coats is enough, and it, it, it really isn't. The other thing this says is that we want to fire this to mature cone 0504. Now if you recall, this bisqueware we fire to 06. 0504 is just a little bit hotter than that. And this is an example of what these underglazes look like fired to cone 0504. They, on the back here is where I don't have any glaze over the top. On this side I have some glaze sprayed over the top so it's a little bit glossy. These colors are bright. They look basically how they look. The red is the same red. It looks basically the same as the red in the jar. That is using these glazes or these underglazes as designed. But we actually have some examples in the studio of people who have painted these on and fired them to cone 10. That's our glaze temperature that we use in the studio for functional work. These pe the person who made this tile and the person who made this tile 
have painted on the underglazes. They've written down the number next to this. So this is, for example, there's stuff over the, over the number. This one is, for example, 327. So if I look here, I might be able to find, if they used this glaze, the number 327. And I can't, but uh, we, might, we might be able to find that on another piece. Um, and the person has just drawn a stripe of that color and, and written it down. Here is the Shaner's Clear. That's one of these buckets over here of Cone 10 glaze over the top. Here is that underglaze, fire to cone 10, but without any glaze over the top. And you can see some of the colors look like how they're expected to look. Uh, for example, these are all greens and then a blue. Um, and these look fairly green. This one looks like it's changed color quite a bit. So beware of using underglazes at cone 10 because they may change how they look. They also can melt just a little bit, particularly uh, they won't melt and run down the pot, but they can stick to the biscuit if they're on the underside of the pieces. This is actually an example of these underglazes with just a simple clear over the top. This is our class clay and they put a simple low fire clear over the top. And I want to make sure you're clear about this distinction. High fire clear, cone 10, shaner's clear. Low fire clear, not food safe because the clay is still porous. This clay has been vitrified, it no longer absorbs water. This one can let water through because the clay itself is not vitrified. The surface looks shiny, it looks functional, but it hasn't been fired hot enough to be functional. This is a different uh, glaze over the top, and so beware as you're, as you're looking to use this, beware of which temperature you plan to use. I have one other note or one other warning. Look how similar these bottles look, right? This one is an underglaze, this one is a glaze, and the only way you can tell that by looking at them is to actually read the directions. You also see the the label's a different color. But this says under glaze, meaning it is not a glaze. It's more like a slip. And this one says gloss glaze. This is a glaze, this will melt, and this will melt too much and make a mess if you fire it to cone 10. These are kept behind the X on the wall over on the side. These are kept in the labeled under glaze section. And you're welcome to use these. You may not use these unless you've already gotten uh, introduced to them in class. Thanks.